Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. And in the last episode, guys, we discovered that there is a bit of tension going on within the refugee flotilla. That each of the major ships of the flotilla actually belong to three different colonies who do not get along, even after the Flux pretty much wiped them out. And uh, we got to meet all the players involved, and PK still has some time before they finish their investigation, so we need to try and help out the other two ships. We were able to take care of everything that was needed on the Pilgrim Seed, but here in the Dust Houses, with um, Aki, we need to do the system repair, but the thing that's actually going to be the toughest is this uh, either a ship mind replacement or supply spores. Well, I, th I guess the spores would be fairly easy to get compared to the ship mind. Um, so I need to decide what we're going to do here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and cross over. Do we have any freighters appearing? Oh, actually, I've got freighters appearing in the next two days. So we could potentially get a ship mind component out of this, which is going to cost us some money, but that's fine. We've got plenty to go. So let's go ahead and we'll just finish off the repairs. And I think that'll, that'll work. So Aki will probably very much appreciate that. You notice a bug in the wind cycling system and manage to fix it. Aki gives you a knowing look. Seems like you're proving yourself. Well, let's keep that going. Okay, Aki wants to talk. I see you've been contributing. Aki stands next to you at the dust house window. I was unsure what to expect when we joined the flotilla on its voyage to the eye. But after the journey across the system, then the quarantine, and then the flux reaching all the way out here too. Aki stops herself. Thank you. She bows a little. The other ships have only been interested in sending us supplies, but we grow all we need. She gestures at the dust house. What the dust houses need, that is the problem that concerns us. She smiles and turns to you. Shall we go inside? Into the dust house? Where else? She taps away at a panel by the window. Seems only fair that after your help with the support systems, you get to see what it is that you are maintaining. Aki leads you to an opening beside the window. You pass through a dark changing room, and you notice Aki is sliding on an oxygen mask and visor. She looks at the swirling dust inside. Inside it's just like Ember Step. Thin atmosphere, constant dust storms, nothing that will bother you. So we're going on Arrakis, essentially. She passes you a mask. The dust isn't exactly pleasant to inhale, however. So take this. You hold it to your face. She leads you through a short decontamination tunnel with its fizzing panels of purifying light and then through into the dust house. Immediately, the wind and the heat hits you. You feel the rough waves of dust scattering across your face and peer through the amber murk. Your feet slide on shifting piles of sand. Welcome to Step. On emulation of it, at least. Aki's voice sounds distant, echoey. The terraforming process only managed to provide a limited atmosphere around the moon, one which is slowly escaping. It's been like that since I was born, so I got used to the idea. You catch her bright eyes through the amber dust. So did everything else that lives there. You feel something hard beneath your feet, beneath the sand, like a coil of rope. Look down. You instinctively look down and see something pale and twisted poking out of the sand. 
Aki sees you looking. This is Step Silk. It's one of the plants we established on Step. Oh, I thought it was going to be a snake. She kicks away some red sand. Like any bast fiber, it can be redded and woven into clothes. I'm wearing some made from it myself. It's one of the many species adapted to Step since the Solheim collapse, which is why it must be preserved. She stares out into the swirling dust. It is as much a refugee as we are, and the dust houses hold hundreds of other species. You look at the pale, unassuming root, threaded thickly through the sand. Aki watches you silently. Had enough? It'll be easier to speak outside. Aki leads you back through the decontamination tunnel, which blasts the dust from both of you, from both of you with a burst of metallic tasting air, and into the changing room. Aki hangs up both the masks, patiently awaiting your questions. What happened on Ember's step? Aki pauses, pulling her shawl around her. She looks small and pale inside its layers. Step was already a doomed world. <laughs> when Solheim gave the terraforming contract to Cybele, they believed they could build an atmosphere, but the moon's erratic orbit made it impossible to maintain. By the time the Solheim collapsed, the atmosphere was already fading, and Cybele's attention was on Ember's hearth. After the collapse, Cybele fell too. Its researchers scattered across the moons, and any central organization lost. Since then, my parents' generation worked tirelessly to survive, to adapt what, what we had to the failing moon. The steppe silk, the other adapted species, are the life's work of the steppe's colonies. So when the flux started to collapse our computer systems, corrode and destroy our life support, our water supply, our agriculture, we had to leave. Aki sits heavily on a nearby bench. Soon the only traces of step will be on this ship. Aki begins to cry quietly. You're unsure what to do. Now's not a time to ask about the flux. Let's just go ahead and sit beside her. You sit on the bench beside her as she sobs. You understand why this ship, why the refugees from step are so different. Their world was already dying when the Flux arrived. Ember's step is a terraformed moon, a partial atmosphere, established colonies, agriculture, and yet when the Flux event started, its people had to leave. You think of the eye and the delicate web of decaying systems it rests upon. What hope does a ruined station have against a wave that corrupts, corrodes, and collapses? Aki interrupts your thoughts, rubbing her eyes. <laughs> Not everyone left. There wasn't room to take all the people and fill the dust houses. My parents, their friends, and, and many others stayed. <laughs> we carry the step for them. I have a feeling they didn't want to leave. Well, perhaps there's hope. We learn not to talk of hope on a dying world. There's meaning for them, and any f future they can build with the time they have. She stands up. I wanted you to understand the importance of these dust houses, of what they contain. She leads you back out into the corridor. If the flux events continue to reach out to the eye, we need to build protections to ensure their safety. Aki meets your eye. I can help. Aki smiles weakly. I knew it. You will be welcome on the wind's long shadow whenever you wish. These dust houses are already decaying. I have seen it. She stares into the dust. We had thought they would last longer, but that last flux event. Help us. Aki looks at you. Please. 
I will. I have this horrible feeling that we're going to have to choose which of these ships are going to be destroyed by the Flux. When you are ready, we will begin the preparations for reinforcing the dust houses. We need to be ready for the next Flux event. Aki's eyes shine with the last of her tears. I'm... I will see you soon. Aki drifts away down the door, leaving you alone once more to the viewing window, watching the ragged, delicate traces of the moon known as Ember Step. Ooh, okay. Preservation. So we have another thing to do in addition. Well, I think we can pull this off. Um, wow, that takes that's going to take a lot of energy if we fail, though. Holy crap. Improving the dust houses isn't the only way to sustain the step silk. With intuitive care, the plant can be made more resistant. Fortunately, this, this gives us more progress and less energy if we fail. So, let's go ahead. I think we may be in good shape doing this. For, with intuition. I was going to go ahead and throw the rest into getting spores, but I don't think that that is going to be on the agenda. Okay, positive outcome. Reroll. Alright. So if we do three, we got a 25% chance of negativity. No risk it, no biscuit. Hey, I'll take it. You care for the step silk, trimming dead, se dead segments, feeding live ones. You start to understand its process and practices. All right, cool. I think that was a very productive day. We're going to have to wait till the freighters show up um, before we're able to fix anything over here. So that's going to be in two days, and then we'll have two days left before PK is done. So progress, progress is happening, for sure. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some, some mushroom stew. We've got plenty of money, might as well use it. I'm wondering if we're going to get some more um, upgrades here. We've got two upgrade points. If we get three, we can knock another one of our um, skills up to a plus two, which would be pretty nice. And we don't have any more salvage anymore, unfortunately. I think those days are pretty much done. So we're going to have to start using our stabilizers. And I do have mushrooms we can add. There's just a lot to do. All right, feed the cat. Call it a day. I definitely feel the sympathy for um, Aki's people. Okay, got some good dice. Kind of more so than the others, to tell you the truth. Because they were already struggling. They didn't come from a land of plenty. Very kind of salt of the earth. So, one, two, three, one, two, three... So three dice could be used for this. And then... Oh, okay. I think that'll work out. So start that action. With remarkable intuition, you not only support the step silk, but harden it. Aki smiles when she sees the result. We are here to help. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and use this three. Because that's going to get a neutral. Um, no negative. And we'll keep that six. Preservation. Now, Aki wants to have another chat. Need to double check and see if there was anything here at the Pilgrim Seed. No. There was not. 
You and Aki stand side by side at the viewing window in silence. The dust swirls and you glimpse the twisted root systems of the step silk through the... I've never been able to... that haze. <laughs> After all these cycles, you feel a strange connection to a world on which you have never set foot. Aki shifts from foot to foot. She seems restless, eager to speak but unsure of what to say. We did it. Aki smiles at you warmly. We did. She pauses and turns back to the window. What is the value of all of this? She asks suddenly. Are preserving a world we have left behind. History, heritage, or conservation? Hmm. Maybe heritage. I like, I like the conservation. That seems a more scientific answer, though. But heritage seems more in tune to, like, her parents. Heritage. Aki is silent for a moment. Our practices, our lives require the materials, the patterns that Step provides. But if those practices remain unchanged while the universe around them shifts, aren't they already dead? She pauses. What is better, to preserve at all costs or to allow things to be destroyed by change? Aki paces away, lost in thought. I'm grateful to you for helping protect the dust houses, for ensuring their slide into decay is delayed, even averted. But now I find myself at an impasse. The stability of the dust houses changes things. It makes me aware of how blinkered we have been. Aki stops to look at you. Her posture is somehow different. If the ecosystems of Step, if its people, cannot grow to meet the future, why preserve it? She frowns. Are we just slaves to the preservation of what came before? You can change. Aki comes close. Holds ha your hands in hers. We must change. We must change to live. She smiles. I have seen that in you. The step, these people, this ship, should serve more than heritage, than history. They should serve the future. She takes a breath. There are those in the flotilla that need clothes, that need food that can benefit from the gifts of the Steps ecosystem. I want you to invite them. Can you do that for me? Of, of course. I know that Saul sent you. She smiles. You can tell him Aki, Captain of the Wind's Long Shadow, invites all the people of the flotilla to come. Captain? She smiles. You never asked. Aki steps away. You want to know about the flux, no? About its purposes, its origins? She smiles. You wish to protect your home as we could not. I'm afraid I don't have much to tell you. It's an exotic wave of sorts. An energy that passes through matter. It shifts the very charged particles which run through our electrical systems. It is possible to shield against it, as you would radiation, as we have done with the dust houses, but only while it's weak. The flux event here was much like the first ones we felt on Ember Step. Localized, destructive, but bearable. But in time, its strength grew. I don't know if it'll be the same here, but... She pauses. It is coming from the center of the system from the close orbit of Hellion's star, H1, a Helion's. That is all we could uncover. She is silent for a moment, unsure of what to add. 
I'm sorry I cannot offer more, but you are always welcome on this ship. She smiles. I hope I will see you when the others come. She squeezes both your hands. I hope that this ship, these dust houses, can be more than a museum. I hope they can be a home. With this, she turns and leaves. And you feel that word, home, resonating within you like a struck bell. Okay, got that one done. Let's see. Huzzah. So, that gives us a little bit of wiggle room here. Um, what to do, what to do. Let's use, let's go ahead and harvest some mushrooms from the aviary. Well, we could do that. Or we should go, we could go ahead and collect some spores. I feel that that's probably the better option. Because we have three stabilizers. We don't necessarily need that right now. Let's go ahead and do that. That gives us four. We'll Reroll. And five. And I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and head over here to the wastes. And we'll gather some scrap. So we can do a little bit of our own repairs. Now, swing over here. And three spores. Oh wow, we needed to do three spores and we can't repeat that, so we have to do a ship mine replacement. Alright, well I'm glad that I uh I'm glad that we did that. Cool. Now we will go grab ourselves some food. I think we should have a photo of ourselves at Emphasis Booth, like number one customer. Some sort of loyalty program. I guess that's why we're getting the 20% off. I know that's one of our our uh, our skills, but still. Okay. A little bit of repair. crackers for the kitty and end the cycle and see about getting a ship mined in one turn let's see because we've got freighters here on both so let's do the man those that haggle over prices I know every time I see it it bugs me but bleh Ship behind fragment. One. Two. Thank you, freighter. Pleasure doing business with you. Now, let's see about buying some scrap. And hope that we get another ship mine fragment. If we don't, we're going to be in a bit of... Oh, okay. There we go. Love it. Pickle of pickle avoided. And now to the Ort Exchange, right? New Ort Fabricator. Aha. Excellent. Now we'll swing over. We may be able to just go ahead and use a lot of our points here, or a lot of our dice to uh, get scrap components, get ourselves back up to full. And I think we'll be in pretty good shape, all things considered. You supplied the ship mine, but in a way it seems to only make the crew more suspicious of you. Well, we just can't win, can we? As you cross the axis, looking for a shuttle to take you back to the ruined cordon, you spot Peter, standing at the edge of the central hub. This guy has, um, reminds me of, what's his name? 
Oh, I forgot his name off the top of my head. He's a comedian, and he was on, like, Rescue Me, but he was in um, Demolition Man, and he was, like, the leader of the Resistance. And this is the kind, that vibe of, I just want a, 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 I don't care about your utopia, I just want a hamburger kind of vibe. Something about the way he's leaning against the rail looking down across the access and toward the blinking lights of the flotilla beyond makes you pause. He's completely still, his head drooping low and his shoulders hunched high. Well, let's approach him. You lean on the railing a little way from Peter, leaving a gap between you. This close, you can see the blank stare in his eyes, the way his hands hang limply in front of him. He takes a minute to notice you. Sleeper? Still hanging around? Are you okay? Peter pauses. Not really, no. Peter closes his eyes. He can feel his mind worrying, the thoughts refusing to be still. You know, Sleeper... He says without opening his eyes. No one asked you to come here. He clenches his jaw. So why don't you just get lost? He looks directly at you, his stare a challenge. What's with you? Peter stands back from the railing. Who invited you, sleeper? Who said you could come here? You think because the Harthers decided to name you to name you their errand boy, we have to put up with you? We don't want you here. We don't need you. His eyes burn with rage. Go home, you stupid machine. A second after he shouts that final line, he collapses in on himself, staying upright, but all the energy going out of his body. He slumps back against the railing, his eyes closed once more. You wait. After a while, he speaks. I'm tired, sleeper. I'm tired of everything. I'm tired of the empty paternalism of hearth. I'm tired of the paranoid whining of the crews. I'm tired of endless cycles that look the same, smell the same, feel the same. I'm tired of running, of hiding, fixing every shitty Thing that breaks out here. His shout echoes a little in the hub, but few stop to look. He looks down at his feet. I think one of the worst things you can say is, I get it. But everyone is tired. Peter doesn't react. He stands. I'm going to go. He looks at you and sniffs. Get some sleep. Well, you sleep well. Peter nods slowly, turning away. He raises a hand and drifts away toward the center of the hub. You turn back to the railing, not wanting to watch him go. Seeing him like this, you prefer not to stare. The traffic of the Axis rumbles on you as you watch, or rumbles on as you watch, under an endlessly shining sun. The same air recycled through all of these lungs, the same dust gathering speck by speck on the windows. You take a sharp breath, stand straight and get moving, before the inertia of it all gets to you too. Well, that didn't go well. Axis job board. Crew socializing. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> well, we definitely don't want to have the good relations, and looks like we're not going to be able to get our, uh... Um, what is it? Our engineering, or our scrap components anytime soon. So let's see about getting this done. I knew this was probably going to be the tough one. Actually, this is a good time to go ahead and end the episode. When we get back, I guess all of our focus is going to be on um, helping out the folks here on the Axis. And then seeing what PK is up to. So I hope you all have enjoyed it. 
If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.